Hello, welcome to another week's reading vlog. My head looks like an egg right now, but I do have hair, I promise. I just look very eggish. <laughs> it is Monday. I am starting this on Monday. It is like half four, ten to five now. Um, I'm still not working, so I'm still at home. I've been playing Animal Crossing, editing last week's vlog. I've uploaded last week's vlog. I haven't done any reading yet. I've um, just been doing some planning and watching a few videos and stuff but I am actually now going to start a book and I'm going to start To Kill a Kingdom by Alexander Cristo because this is the last book that I need for my owls. If you watched last week's vlog then you will know that I swapped out the History of Bees for Giant Days volume 10 because I didn't fancy reading this and it wasn't on TBR Pursuit, it wasn't compulsory. I didn't even need the owl but I just wanted to do all 10 so I just swapped the Arithmancy Owl to um, Giant Days volume 10. So I did that last week but I actually read it after I closed off the vlog but I did read Giant Days volume 10. Um, which, as I say, leaves To Kill a Kingdom as my last owl, which is for divination. It was the random number generator um, and I needed to read a standalone for TBR Pursuit, I think it was. Um, but yeah, that's that. This is just the dust jacket. The actual book is here. It's got like a sword on it, can you see? There we go. Um, I have started this previously, probably like nearly two years ago, I want to say. I started reading this and got like seven chapters in and then stopped. Seems to be a thing with me, like if I start a book and stop, it's about seven chapters in. But I'm going to start it again and hopefully finish it. It's the 27th today, I've got until the last day of the month, which is Thursday. So I've got four days to read this. I think I will be fine. I will keep you updated. As for right now though, Jake wants me to go and look at some Zoo Tycoon stuff um, and I love Zoo Tycoon so I'm gonna go and look at whatever that is. <laughs> to pretending I can cook with me, JD Ray. <laughs> I can't cook, but Jake wants me to bake. I, I, I would like to bake, I can't bake. Full disclaimer, I am a terrible baker. You would think baking a cake is an easy thing, not for me. I put a cake in the oven once forgetting to add flour. It was just colourful egg. <laughs> so, hmm. Fingers crossed for this. I don't have a lot of baking materials. I actually just went out to Tesco to do a bit of our weekly shop, or do our weekly shop, um, and I picked up a scale because we didn't have one. What I didn't pick up though was a mixing bowl, so I'm just using this large Tupperware dish. I do have a spoon, and I do have a whisk actually, and I do have a dish as well. So, I have got flour, sugar, butter, cocoa powder and eggs. 
I don't think I need the eggs for this. Um, but I'm gonna make the simplest thing going, right? Simplest thing. I'm gonna try and make chocolate crunch, which is flour, sugar, cocoa powder, and butter. I have that. Um, so I have the ingredients, I have the scales. Um, we're just gonna see how terribly this goes, because um, I can't bake. Uh, we'll see. I've got the instructions on my phone, I've got the quantities and stuff. We're just gonna hope for the best. Um, and I thought you might want to see how that goes. <laughs> in the oven and I suppose we just hope for the best. Can't really go wrong with that I don't think but I'll probably burn it. <laughs> so honestly that doesn't look bad. <laughs> we'll have to come back when it's cooled down and then I'll like chop it up into little triangles and we'll try it I guess. But it looks pretty good, it's not burnt, so that's a bonus. <laughs> I thought I should actually speak. I don't think I vlogged anything yesterday. It's Thursday, April 30th. It is the last day of April, therefore the last day of the owls, and I'm still on my last read, which is To Kill a Kingdom. However, can you see where I'm up to? I'm over halfway. I have 150 pages left to go, so I am feeling pretty confident that I can finish this today. It's nearing three o'clock now, so I have the rest of the day to get this done and I'm feeling good about it. I am not so much feeling good about the book though. It's... the beginning was harder to get into. I kind of hit that seven chapter mark again because um, obviously I read it before, got to seven chapters, put it down for whatever reason. I got to that seven chapter mark again and was in a similar mindset of I want to read something else but just pushed through and um, here we are now at chapter, what chapter am I actually up to? 24. So um, decent, decent progress <laughs> there. Um, so yeah, I will finish it. I am finding it quite predictable. I think I know what's gonna happen. Um, I'm not massively into any of these characters. I think Madrid is probably my favourite character of them all so far and we don't really see that much of her. But yeah, if you're unfamiliar with what To Kill a Kingdom is about, it's about a siren and a prince slash siren killer. So we have the two perspectives, one from 
uh, Lyra, who is the Siren, and one from Alien, a lion, the prince. Um, so we have their two differing perspectives, and obviously the Siren wants to kill the prince. The prince wants to kill the Siren, but, like, it's a YA fantasy. Enemies to lovers? Probably. <laughs> I'm not massively feeling it. It is kind of forceful reading, but I will finish it and we will see how it ends. But um, yeah, I will definitely finish it today. I have to finish it today because I said in TBR Pursuit that I actually finished the 12th book TBR, so I will. <laughs> I'm listening to Narnia ambient music from Ambient Worlds because I really like the Narnia soundtracks. Um, and I've also had a parcel from Amazon today. I ordered myself a couple of books because there was one that I needed to get and I had a gift card so I thought I might as well just use it. Um, so I picked up Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens. This is going to be the June middle grade monthly book. So there we go, we did a poll on whether we should have mystery or adventure and mystery one so we have a little murder mystery middle grade and it's beautiful with the blue sprayed edges like I really do like that I know this series is massive as well like there are so many books in this series but the books aren't too big so yeah we'll get to this one in June excited about that and then I also picked up Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb which is the second book in the Farsia trilogy um, I read Assassin's Apprentice earlier this month for the Owls and this is the second one and it is substantially bigger but I'm excited about it. I did really enjoy the first one so I think I'm gonna like the second and the size of it actually excites me like there's gonna be a lot going on in here. Look at how big it is. Looking forward to that. So yeah that was my little Amazon order. Yeah now we've had a little bit of a catch up I'm gonna go back to reading this, listening to Narnia music. Hello, it is much later on, is it still Thursday? Yep, Thursday night, last day of the owls, and I am happy to report that I finished To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. This was my last owl, my twelfth owl, and I finished it for Divination, which was the random number generator, and for TBR Pursuit it was a YA fantasy standalone, I believe. I spoke a little bit about how I sort of DNF'd it when I first read it and I have been pushing through this time and I'm glad I did. I have put it through Core Pile and it's come out at a low three star. I think it's like 4.7 on Core Pile. Core Pile being the writing system that I use. It's by G but grossed. It's characters, atmosphere, writing, plot, intrigue, logic, enjoyment. That's the system. Um, just to save anyone asking. <laughs> so yeah, it came out at a low three star, which means it wasn't terrible and it wasn't the worst book I read this month, which feels right. It definitely was predictable. Like I knew where things were going and the romance at points was a bit eye rolly, but whatever. And I like how it ended. I was intrigued, but not massively. I think intrigue came out at one of the lowest or was logic one of the lowest? I think logic might have been one of the lowest. Um, there were certain points where like characters would say something and then later on they would say ah but I never said this and I'd be like actually no you did. Like at one point the prince says to another character he's like trying to buy information and this person wants to be a queen and he says I'll give you a kingdom I'll make you my queen and then later on he's renegotiating with her and he says like Ah, I never promised you it would be my kingdom. I'm like, but you did say you would make her your queen. So. You kind of did. Things like that, like there was just little bits where like they'd say one thing and then later declare that that's not what they had said when it was. And I think that was just a little bit of like inconsistency in the writing. Like it could have easily been avoided. Like he could have said to her at that point, like, I'll give you a kingdom, I'll make you a queen. And then later on say, I never told you it'd be my kingdom, I never told you it'd be my queen, like that would make more sense but that's not how it happened. <laughs> um, yeah, came out at three stars. I'm glad that I read it, I'm glad I didn't DNF it but it's not going to be one that sticks with me, it's not going to be one that I remember for a long time I don't think and similarly I would say it's a story we've heard before but it's not really like there's no like lost princess sort of trope but there is, no, yeah I suppose it was a bit unique. Um, it is 
kind of loosely a Little Mermaid retelling, I suppose. Siren comes to Earth, gets comes to Earth, comes to land, gets legs, wins a prince's heart, etc. Um, so in that respect, we've seen it many times, but it did have a unique twist. I give it that. But yeah, came out at a low three stars, and we move on. That does mean that I have finished my owls. I have finished all 12 of my owls. I have completed them. Woohoo! The only book I didn't read this month being The History of Bees, which is one that I said from the very beginning would be one that I probably wouldn't read, and I swapped it out for Giant Days Volume 10, so I still got my Arithmancy Owl. I just didn't read this book, which I kind of knew I wouldn't. That's my April TBR done. It is the 1st of May tomorrow. I have my May TBR sat there ready. I think I'm gonna try and knock Spellslinger out first uh, because I can probably read that pretty quickly. Like, can I read that in what's left of this week? Maybe, that would be nice. Um, and then of course I have Evelyn Hugo, um, but I can't be asked with that this week. I'll do that, I don't know, another time. <laughs> um, so yeah, I might try and do, might try and read Spellslinger this week. I mean, it's not a small book, but it is a reread and a book that I adore. So seems like a decent place to start. So uh, yeah, that's that. But the owls were a massive success. I call this success. It's Friday evening and I thought it might be time for a chat. It's the 1st of May, so new reading month. And you know how I said I was going to start by reading Spellslinger? I didn't. Because I got approved for an e-arc of Wonderscape on NetGalley. And I never use NetGalley because I don't like reading ebooks. But I don't know why I had the desire to just see what there was. But I did. So I had a look and Wonderscape was on there and if you saw my top 10 middle grade TBR then you will know that Wonderscape is one of my anticipated reads. Um, so I requested it and was approved for it. So I started reading Wonderscape instead. I think I'm like just under 100 pages into it but I'm gonna read some more of it tonight. I've got it on my iPad. But yeah, I'm really enjoying that so far. It's very, it's kind of pitched as Jumanji meets Ready Player One. And I'm not incredibly familiar with Ready Player One. I haven't read the book or watched the film, but I know it's about being in a game. Um, and of course I'm familiar with Jumanji. I've seen not the latest film, but I've seen the original and the remake of Jumanji. And again, awesome concept. And it really, is like that. These three kids stumble upon an exp I say stumble upon, it's like literally first page you are thrown straight into the action and it really propels the story like immediately these three kids that knew of each other but didn't really know each other beforehand like they go to school together but they're not really friends. Boom this location thrust into this game so confused what is going on but have to work together to progress through this game that they think they're in um, to get home. Um, where I'm up to right now they've kind of just worked out what they have to do in order to get home um, but there's already been like levels that they've gone through and things that they've done. It's just so fast-paced and so action-packed like right from the beginning. I don't think I've read a book that's quite so like propelling that quickly in a while. So I'm really looking forward to diving back into that later. Um, but I have started Spellsling it as well. Um, I've decided that I'm going to do my reread on audio because then I will always have the audiobooks and I like having my favourite books on audio just because like they can be nice to relax to to listen to if you know what I mean. Like also on audiobook like I can audibly reread these whilst playing Animal Crossing and if I like miss out on a little bit I already know it so I can fill it back in so I don't feel so bad doing other things whilst listening to it when it's a reread. But also as I say I just want them on Audible 
because then I will always have them on Audible and always have the option. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I've been listening to it today whilst playing Animal Crossing and I'm up to chapter 14, uh, page 125. So yeah, really making my way through this and loving it again. Like, meeting Ferrius again. I've always pronounced Ferrius's name as Ferrius Parfait, but well, it's spelt Parfax, but I thought it can't be pronounced Parfax, it must be like, I don't know, some sort of like silent X and must be Parfait, but no, according to the audiobook it is actually Ferrius Parfax, which is always going to sound wrong to me because I've read these whole series calling her Ferrius Parfait, but no. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying that, meeting Ferrius again and Ferrius teaching Kellen how to play cards for the first time and introducing him to the powders for the first time and the first time he did the um, Karath air uh, breath spell and like how I know that all of these things are going to come together but they haven't yet come together. Mm, love it. Oh, I'm so excited and seeing some of the characters that I either know and love or know and hate and knowing how this is gonna end up and seeing like already seeing like nods towards things that I know are gonna happen and like it's already so early and like seeing things and thinking it's literally said there and then it does happen later on but like you don't think about that when you're reading it for the first time. Oh I love rereading my favourite books. So uh, yeah, I'm having a really good time with this as well. So May the 1st and I'm already like into two, two really good books. I hold this up as if it's a book, but it's on my book, but on my book, on, on the pad. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to May's reading. The fact that I started off May with a book that's not even on TBR Pursuit, like how cocky am I feeling? Quite apparently. Also, whilst we're here, something incredibly exciting was announced today. Susan Dennard released the title of the fourth, technically fifth, Witchlands novel. It's Azult's book. Azult is my favourite character. I absolutely love her. And her book is Witch Shadow, which breaks the title rule. And then she's explained kind of why it breaks the title rule but also said she can't explain why it breaks the title rule because the title rule is like whoever's book it is the title of the book is their witch power so Safi's book is truth witch like Adrian's book is blood witch you know like it's their witchery but she doesn't want to spoil what is Yort's witchery is <laughs> which means there's so much more about Azuot's power that we don't know. Because already I was thinking like, well are they going to call her this witch, this witch, or this witch? So like, what is she? Ah! <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, and the release date for the book has been like public, uh, publicly announced, which is February 16th. I knew it was February, I just couldn't remember the date. Um, which means now would be a good time to tell you that I am planning a witch along which is a read along for the witchlands i will do a monthly book there will be live shows etc i'm planning on doing october november december january so truth witch in october um wind witch in november sight witch in december blood witch in january and then witch shadow ah, in february so just so you know that's sort of the schedule that i'm gonna head for i will have co-hosts for said live show um but oh my god am I excited to do that so mark it in your calendars if you want to read the Witchlands along with me and friends bear it in mind holy shit am I excited hello I thought we should have a quick catch up it's Saturday it's half seven the Le Guin Along live show is happening in half an hour very excited so I'm all prepped and ready to go for that but today I have made some decent progress in Spellslinger you can see where I am I'm now uh, probably only got like a third of it left I'm up to chapter 30 page 256 we have met Richie's again and I've learned that it's not pronounced Richie's so I was pronouncing Ferrius Parfait wrong because that's Parfax and it's not Richie's it's Rikis. Rikis. 
I don't know if my brain will ever look at the word and be able to say Rikis. I just don't know. Um, but I'm still loving it. It's one of my favourite books, so my opinion really isn't going to change much. But it's so great to like see it again and meet these characters again and see these characters meeting each other for the first time again. Because there are certain things where like, I can't remember how these characters got from this point to the point they are later. Like the relationship development, I can't remember the details of. So it's interesting and I am very intrigued to keep going to see that because obviously I know what the end game is because I've read them all but like my mind can't remember little bits of like how they got there so I'm having a really good time basically and then of course in um Wonderscape which is on here I am oh, it's probably easier to just check on Goodreads I'm 200 pages into that one as well so over halfway in that so I'm thinking that actually I might be able to finish both of these by the end of this week because I've got all of tomorrow that's going to be easy for me to get through and I've got 150 pages left of Wonderscape and that honestly is just so propelling it's so fast paced like the action just never stops great fun really great fun so uh yeah there's what's going on but yeah I'm prepping for this live stream getting myself all comfy and I guess I will chat to you later Sunday night. It's 10 o'clock on Sunday night. Um, I have finished two books today, <laughs> basically. Um, I haven't vlogged much at all today because I've literally been listening to the audiobook of Spellslinger whilst playing Animal Crossing, then finished that, and then had dinner and read the rest of Wonderscape by Jennifer Bell and finished that. So successful day in terms of finishing books. I call this weekend a successful reading weekend. I'm very pleased with finishing both of those books. And they both scored very highly on Core Pile. So I'm excited about that as well. Uh, let's talk about Spellslinger first because it's in my hand. This of course was a reread for me. First book in one of my favourite series ever, which is the Spellslinger series by Sebastian de Castell, who is one of my favourite authors ever. I pop this in TBR Pursuit as a five star prediction. Not sure if it counts as a prediction when I already knew it would get five stars because it's a reread, but I gave it five stars. <laughs> I love the characters in this and I have like more appreciation for it on a reread I think because I can see like back to how clever it is. Like now I know the rest of the series, like going back and seeing these characters meeting for the first time, their first interactions, their first impressions of each other, like how the society was then compared to how it is later, because a, a lot happens in this series and seeing it back at the very beginning when Ferris is meeting Kellen for the first time and giving him that discordance card to make choices, love it. Ah, oh, and the bit with the um, clan prince's wife can't remember her name yeah the clown prince's wife i almost forgot all about that uh the dowager magus that's it the dowager magus she had an active role in this and i kind of forgot that that happened and that was how kellen discovered things but i can't say too much because spoilers but 
I adore this book. I love these characters. I love how everything unravels, like all the hints and like tricks and how the plot goes a bit all over the place, but it all makes sense in the end. Oh, love it. I'm very excited to dive into the second book as well. I am going to reread the whole series on audiobook just because I want to have them all on audiobook, so very excited about that. But yeah, five stars. I've raved about this series enough. You don't need to hear me do it again. But I loved it and, you know, as a book down. <laughs> then of course I read Wonderscape by Jennifer Bell and finished that today. I had the e-arc from NetGalley so I'm so happy I have been able to read this sooner than I would have liked because I think it comes out like the 30th of June. I think it's quite late June that it comes out but oh my god pre-order it. It's amazing. It came out at an 8.57 on Corpile which is a very high four star. I had such a fun time with this book. It is quite honestly one of the most propelling middle grades I have ever read. Like the action kicks off on page one and it is just non-stop throughout it. Like there are new adventures, new worlds. If you're not familiar with the concept, I can't remember if I've explained, it's compared to Jumanji in that the three main characters kind of get spontaneously sucked into an in reality adventure game. And they are in this game and in order to work out how to get home, they have to progress through the levels to meet the heroes to solve a bigger thing in order to get back to their world and it's just like from the first chapter adventure action non-stop until the end it's so propelling and like such a page turner i loved it and also it's got like such cute messages like for the younger readers like messages of friendship and stuff because our three main characters come from such like different backgrounds and they all have different ways of life and they're not necessarily friends at the beginning, they hardly know each other but then they just, they bond and a friendship blossoms and I love that. And then also there's a message of like how anyone can be a hero and you need to believe in yourself and believe in your friends and you can accomplish anything. <laughs> I adored it but yeah it also had like lots of real life icons in it like Isaac Newton, uh, Thomas Edison, Mary Shelley, for example, amongst a few. Um, and it was just great to have like little bits of history in there as well. Such an incredible adventure. So it came out a very high four star. I loved it. So I've had a pretty good reading time. It's the 3rd of May and I've finished two books already for May. And it seems like such a long time ago that I finished The Owls, but I finished To Kill a Kingdom this week as well. So I've read three books this week success um but the end of april feels like such a long time ago even though it was only three days ago absolute madness but yeah successful reading week i am actually going to close off this vlog now as well i might get a start on editing it tonight as well just for fun um and because i don't know what i want to start yet and i can't be bothered to make that choice so i'll make that choice tomorrow for a new week's vlog you'll find out next week successful reading week three books Two books down already for me. I'm happy with that. Yay! All right, yeah, as I say, I'm gonna close this off now. So thank you very much for watching another week's reading vlog. I can't remember most of what happened in this week. This week seems to have gone on for a very long time, because as I say, April feels like such a long time ago. But I hope you've enjoyed it anyway. If you have, give us a thumbs up, chat to me down below, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.